What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So it's been a while since we've done any kind of geometry nodes tutorials. I wanted to make a quick tutorial teaching you how to scatter objects on a surface in 2023. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so geometry nodes can be a little bit intimidating, so don't worry about that. We're going to approach this in a way where it's easy to follow, and I'm gonna go step by step. So first thing you need to do is you need to add a window where you can actually control your geometry nodes. So we're just gonna click on the uh, Add Workspace button over here, just the plus, and under General, we're gonna add a geometry nodes window. And so what that's going to do, or our geometry nodes workspace, and what that's going to do is that's going to create a workspace that's kind of set up so that we can work with geometry nodes. And so what we want to do is we want to take some objects and we want to scatter them on this plane. So we'll talk about a couple different ways to do that and some ways to randomize those in this video. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to select our plane and we need to click down here to add a new geometry node setup. And so when these come in, these come in with an input and an output. And uh, we're not going to worry too much about those, though we are going to add some inputs. Those are what's going to show up over here on the right hand side of the page where you can make adjustments. But what we need to do right now is we need to start by just adding some points, right? So we need to have this so we need to take our geometry nodes, they need to reference this surface, and we need to add some points to our surface. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just gonna click in here, we're gonna do a Shift A, and we're just going to search for distribute points on faces. We're gonna click right here. And we're just gonna click right in the middle of this. And so what you're gonna get right here is you're going to get a number of different points. So it's going to reference this object right here and it's going to find different points on the object. Notice how if you drag this up and down, you can change the density. You can also change the seed to randomly set where the points are on that surface. Okay, and so right now, the first thing you might've noticed is, okay, that's great, but my object is now hidden. And so the reason for that is because we've told this to take the group, create a bunch of points and then output them but we didn't tell it what to do with the original geometry. So what we wanna do is we wanna join our original geometry with the points that we've added on our faces. So to do that, we're gonna do a Shift A, and we're gonna add a Join Geometry node right here, and we're just gonna click on this line. Now, nothing's happened yet, but what we wanna do is we wanna drag a node from this point into our geometry right here. Now we can see our original object and it's joining it with the points that are being created in here. So now we have something that's kind of distributed on this surface. And one thing that's cool about this, and I'm gonna tab into edit mode real quick, and I'm actually going to subdivide this face. So I'm just adding some additional geometric detail. So I'm just going to right click on it and subdivide it a couple different times. But now if I select a vertex in here, and let's say I do some proportional editing and move this up, notice how those points are going to move along with the surface. So it's using the surface and it's placing those on the surface in here like this. So it's distributing those based on whatever that surface is, which is cool. Um, but now what we wanna do is we don't necessarily want points on the surface, right? We wanna add some objects. We wanna scatter some objects on here. And so first off, let's do a Shift A and let's add an object. So we're gonna go with a cone. For, you know what, let's go with the monkey, actually. We're gonna add a monkey, and I'm going to move this over. I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees, and I'm gonna scale it down. One thing that's important about this, and I'm not going to do this right now just so you can see what I'm talking about, is you're going to want to apply your rotation and scale when you scale an object like that. But I'm gonna leave this as is just so you can see why that's an issue. So the next thing we wanna do is on these points, we actually want to distribute an object. So what we wanna do is we wanna do a Shift A and we wanna add an instance on points node right here. And we wanna take the points, plug that into the points, we wanna take the instances, and we wanna join it with this geometry. Now, one thing you're gonna notice about this is notice how that all went away, right? So nothing's on there anymore. That's because we haven't told this, this uh, node what instance to place. So we need to put something in here. And in this case, we wanna add an object info node. 
And so what an object info node is going to do is it's gonna allow us to reference an object. In this case, we're gonna use the eyedropper and we're gonna click on the Suzanne right here. And what we wanna do is we wanna take the geometry from this object and we wanna drag that into the instance. And so notice how when we did that, what that's doing now is that's placing instances of that Suzanne on the surface. Now, one thing you might notice is this is a lot bigger than the Suzanne over here. And that's why I told you we weren't gonna apply our rotation and scale so that you could see what this does. Because we didn't apply our rotation and scale, these objects don't have that applied to them. So whenever you scale an object in object mode, you wanna make sure you go to object, apply, rotation and scale. Notice how now those are the same size and rotation um, as this object over here. And so one thing you might notice about this is these objects are currently not placed so that they're sitting on the ground, right? They're like halfway through the ground. And the reason for that is because what our geometry node setup is doing is it's taking our object origin, which you can see is right in the center of this monkey head right here, and it's placing that on the surface. So the object origin is being placed on the surface, but the object itself moves down below that origin. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a quick rotation of my object so that it'll sit on the ground a little better, but then, and I'm gonna go ahead and I wanna apply the rotation and scale again, because I rotated this. But now what I wanna do is I wanna move this origin down. And so the easiest way to move that origin down is to take this object, go into options, affect only origins, and we're just gonna move that origin down to the bottom of our object, right? And we could move it over here. Maybe that's probably the lowest point of our object. So that's probably gonna be the best fit, but then we're gonna go ahead and toggle that off. But notice how now all of those objects are sitting on the ground like this. So now we've got this geometry node set up in here that's randomly placing objects in here. Note that by the way, you can adjust the density by adjusting the distribute points on faces setting right here, you can also adjust the seed, which is the randomization of those objects. Now let's say that we wanted, if we were in layout mode, let's say that we wanted to be able to go into this geometry node modifier and adjust the number of objects that are in here. Well, the way that you would do that is you need to add an input. So for our group input right now, all it says is geometry, right? But what you can do is you can click on this and tap the N key. So the N letter on your keyboard, and you can go down to group. We'll notice how within group, there's an option in here to add additional inputs. So what I wanna do is I wanna add an input for density. And so you can double click on this to rename it. I'm gonna rename it density. Well then I wanna take this density and I wanna plug it into the density right here. So notice how now this isn't something you can drag over here anymore. It's something that you set in your modifier settings. So now I can drag this up to set my density. So now I can adjust my geometry node in my layout view without actually being in the geometry node view and adjusting the nodes back here. I wanna add another input for density, no, location, seed. And I'm gonna drag that into my seed. So now I can adjust my seed by clicking and dragging this over here as well. So we're making our geometry node set up a little more interactive. Okay, so now we've got this set up where we can adjust the density and the seed, but let's say that we wanted to be able to adjust our scale, right? So let's say we wanted these to be randomly sized. That could be something that could be really important if you do trees or something like that. So the way that we do that is notice how right now our scale is set based on our instance on points object. Well, what we want to do is we want to set our scale so that it's adjusted based on something we set. So I'm going to add a scale input right here. Well, in this case, we want our scale to be randomized, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shift A and I'm going to add a random value node right here. And I'm gonna drag this in. I'm gonna drag my scale into my max like this. And then I'm gonna drag the value into the scale over here. And so notice how now I've got a scale option 
that I can use in order to randomize that scale. However, sometimes I just want to be able to change this without um, adjusting my max right here. And you could put a minimum in here too. So you could do a scale max. Move this up. And call this one scale minimum. And you could drag this into your minimum. So that would give you like full control, right? Of your minimum and your maximum right here. But then you could also add a scale seed. Like this, we're gonna drag that into our seed. So now we can adjust our scale seed over here as well. So we're actually creating a pretty robust geometry node setup over here. Now, let's set this up where we can set a random rotation. So I want these to be randomly rotated so they're not all facing the same direction, right? But in this case, this one's a little bit weird because we only want to set the rotation so that it's applied to the Z value right? We don't want that to be applied everywhere else. We just want it to be the Z because we don't necessarily want these like turning or anything like that. We want them to be pretty flat on our surface. So in this case, we're going to use a different node. So in this case, first off, I want to add. So first off, I'm going to add a rotation value right here. But second, I want to add another random value. and I wanna place it over here. But the problem with this one is if I drag my value into my rotation and I set my rotation and my max like this, when I adjust it, we don't really have any control over the direction of the rotation, right? It's just like randomly rotating things based on the randomization that's over here. So what we need to do is we need to add a different node, which is a combine X, Y, Z node. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to separate out our Z value. So this is gonna take a vector and we can take that vector and plug it into our max right here. And then we can plug our rotation into the Z. And so notice how that's still not working, right? And the reason that's still not working is because our random value is just set to a float. A float is just a value, right? But what it's not doing is it's not looking at the X, Y, Z vectors and differentiating between the three. So what we do is in our random value node, we want to change this to a vector instead of a float. So you don't want a float, you want a vector, right? So you want to drag this vector into your max right here. And then you want to drag your random value into your rotation. Well, now when I adjust this, because we've separated out that Z vector and plugged it into our max, our rotation is only going to affect the Z vector. Now, one other thing that you might want to do is you might want to add a rotation seed. So I'm going to click the plus button right here. We're going to make this a rotation seed. And we're going to drag this into our seed right here. Well, now we can adjust the seed of the rotation using this value as well. So we've got a pretty full featured scattering node set up right here. Now, gives us control over pretty much everything. Um, you could add a rotation minimum and max in here if you wanted to, to give you a little more control. But now let's say that we didn't want to scatter just this one object. Let's say that we wanted to scatter a collection of objects. So I'm gonna bring a couple of those in real quick. Okay, so let's say I have these three trees right here and I wanna scatter all of them on this surface. Well, what I can do is I can add those to a collection. So over here, I'm gonna add a collection and I'm gonna call this trees to scatter. And I'm gonna take those three trees and I'm gonna drag them into the trees to scatter collection. All right, so what I've done is I've created this collection of trees, right? They're all in this trees to scatter collection right here. What we wanna do is we wanna jump over into our, um, we wanna jump over into our plane and we want to change from an object info, we want to do a shift A and we want to add a collection info right here. So that's going to let us do basically the same thing, but it's going to let us pick a collection. And in this case, we want to drag our geometry into the instance button right here in order to place that. Okay, and so you might've noticed that nothing has happened yet. So in this situation, I wanna make sure that I've checked the box for separate children, but then the other thing that's kind of weird right now, so notice how this is all kind of getting placed based on a location relative to the central 
point of our model right here. And so you can see if we really zoom out that these are being placed, but they're like way up in the sky. So you can kind of barely see them up here. So what we want to do in order to fix that is we want to make sure we check the box for reset children. And so when we reset children, what that's going to do is that's going to reset this transformation in here, because what it was doing is it was setting that transformation based on our central point right here, which isn't necessarily what we want. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this scale max down because it's really kind of throwing this off. Now, one other thing though that you might notice is right now it's placing all of those objects on those points. Again, not what we want. So what we wanna do is we wanna go up into our, um, into our instance on points. We're gonna check the box for pick instance. And so what that means is that means that that's going to come in here and that's going to um, just pick a singular instance in here rather than um, rather than placing all of the instances on those points at once. And so again, notice how we can adjust our scale, min, max, other things like that. We can also adjust our density up and down as well as our seed, just like this. And so basically we've got this like full on scattering geometry node set up in here. And we might even call this um, scatter on object. Okay, and so one other thing we might wanna do, and this is something I'm hoping to add in the future, is at the moment, we can't take a geometry node setup, at least as far as I know, and save it as an asset for our asset browser, right? You just can't do it. Um, but what you can do is you can take the object that has the geometry node modifier applied to it, and you can mark that as an asset. So um, what I might do is I might call this geometry node scatter right here. So basically what I've done is I've renamed my plane, but I can right click on this and I can mark it as an asset. And so when I mark that as an asset, what I can do is I can then add that to other scenes. So for example, now if we jump into our current file, we'll click on all and we've got our geometry node scatter right here. If I drag this in, what that's going to do is that's going to bring this object in. Well, when it does that, it's also going to bring in um, the geometry node setup. Now, this is a little bit of an issue um, because at the moment that'll only show up in the current file, right? So what you would need to do is you would need to do a save as, and I'm gonna create a folder called geometry node setups, but I'm just gonna call this geometry node scatter, right? So I've saved this in that folder. Well, what I can do is in my preferences, I can add that folder as an asset library. So I'm gonna click in here all right, so then I can save that in my preferences. Well, now if I open up a new Blender window and I go down into my assets and my asset browser, that geometry node setup is gonna show up in here and I can drag that in. And so what it's gonna do is it's going to bring in that plane and also these objects right here. Well, then all I would have to do is just add a new plane, right? And then now that geometry node setup is in my scene. So I could add a geometry node modifier I could click the drop down and I could click on the scatter on object. Okay, and so when I do that, if I set my scale to one and I set my density to one, notice how this is scattering on this new object as well. So it's a little bit of a workaround right now, but you can save that geometry node setup in here and then apply it to new objects. And then you can just place new things in this collection in order to scatter them on the surface. All right, so that's where I'm going to end this video. We'll talk about some more advanced ways to do things like this in some future videos, but leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. If you're using geometry nodes for anything, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.